Have you ever been disappointed with your Skyrim environment? Have you ever wanted to upgrade your environment, but were frustrated because you didn't know how? Don't worry anymore. Today, I would like to tell you how to further upgrade Skyrim's environment and visuals. And I also prepared mods that will help you, so please watch the video until the end. Then let's get start. The first thing you need to choose is ENB and Weather Mode. ENB is a shader add-on developed by developer Boris Vaontsov. It was created by hooking direct XDLL and modifying various 3D-related information to add various screen effects or post effects that were not in the original engine. And the Weather Mode is not a mode that simply adds or changes the weather of Skyrim, but a mode that completely changes the color and graphics according to the weather of Skyrim. Here you should not use any weather mod. It is recommended to select and use a weather mode that matches the ENB you want to use. In general, if you look at the description of Nexus, it is most of the cases where the creator explains that their ENB was created based on a specific weather mode. To download ENB, you must first access the ENB site. Scroll down the site to news. Click on this. Then the screen will appear. Click download on the screen here. And if you scroll down the screen again, the names of various games will be listed. Click here for the game you want to use the ENB for. If you look at the bottom of the screen after that, you will see various versions listed. Click on the latest version with the highest number. And click the download button below to download ENB. When installing ENB, it is recommended to extract the compressed file directly to the folder where Skyrim is installed. If you put the ENB file in the Skyrim folder, access Skyrim and press the Shift and Enter keys together. Then the ENB setting screen will appear. Then you have installed successfully. If the ENB setting screen does not appear, you may need to review the ENB installation process again. Once you've installed ENB, now download and install the ENB and weather mods you want to use from the Tesnexus site. Of course, the ENB can be unzipped in the Skyrim folder, and the weather mod can be installed through Mod Organizer or Vortex. You can use ENB in this way, but you have to find a combination that suits the color you want. As there are currently many weather mods and ENBs, it is not possible to determine exactly which combination of ENB and weather mods is correct. In fact, people's thoughts about the color of Skyrim are very subjective, so it may look good by someone's standard but not by someone else's point of view. If you've chosen ENB and weather mods, the next thing you'll want to consider is Reshade. Reshade is a utility that allows you to apply various post-processing shaders by hooking the graphics processing middleware of a game or 3D utility. For this Reshade, you don't have to use it. However, if your Skyrim doesn't come out with enough color with only ENB and weather mods, or if you feel certain colors are too strong, or if you really need a specific shader, then you should use Reshade. In my case, I use the sharpen effect that is insufficient only with ENB through Reshade. Reshade has the advantage of being able to choose from several types of sharpens as there are various types of sharpens. The second is Bloom and HDR effect. If you feel that ENB's Bloom effect is lacking, you can make up for it through Reshade. The advantage of Reshade is that there are several types of Bloom and HDR, and you can choose them. Third is the Motion Blur effect. Use the motion blur effect when you want to give a dynamic feeling when moving the screen. Now, let's stop introducing Reshade and talk about how to install it. You can download the latest version of Reshade by accessing the Reshade website and scrolling down. Click on it. When you run the downloaded X file, a screen appears on which game you want to select Reshade for. Choose Skyrim. You must choose either Direct 9 or higher. You should choose according to the Direct you use, but since you usually use 10 or more, you should choose the second one. Now you need to access Skyrim and see if the Reshade Settings screen appears. If you press the Home key in game, the Reshade Settings screen will appear. The first time you start, a tutorial will appear and you can decide to read it or skip it. If the Reshade configuration screen does not appear, you need to check if there is a problem with the Reshade installation process. 
Third is parallax. Parallax refers to a function that uses parallax to create illusions in the eyes and express textures as if they were three-dimensional. Basically, textures in Skyrim consist of texture files and normal maps. Since Skyrim does not support parallax by default, parallax textures had to be added to add parallax. If you have installed the latest version of ENB introduced earlier, you will be able to use parallax effects. Parallax is one of the elements that can greatly upgrade the visual element because it adds a three-dimensional effect to the texture of Skyrim. With recent ENB binaries supporting Parallax, there are now some awesome Parallax texture mods appearing in Tesnexus. You should probably look out for Parallax at this time. Parallax is currently one of the components for upgrading your Skyrim to next-gen. Through this Parallax, I hope you can express the visual elements of your Skyrim in a more three-dimensional way. Check out this video to learn more about how to use Parallax. The fourth thing to introduce is Godre. Godre, also called Sunbeam, in meteorological optics, is a beam of sunlight that appears to radiate from the position of the sun. God Ray is not a simple bloom effect, but an effect where sunlight extends. It is such an effect that the rays of sunlight come out between the leaves of the tree. Godray projected by various objects will further upgrade the fantastic feeling of Skyrim. In the case of Obsidian or Cathedral Weather Mode, the previously applied Godray was disabled. By the way, this mod re-enables a disabled Godray. After installing this, open Skyrim prefs.ini and enter the following options as 1 and 2 respectively. If Godray is not activated even after doing this, run Skyrim, run the ENB setting screen, and set the value to one or more in the lower option in game volumetric rays to activate Godray. However, if Godray is activated at a high value even in the middle of the day, the screen will become hazy like fog. Therefore, it is recommended to set high values for dawn and dusk, and low values for sunrise, day and sunset. The last part to be explained is landscape. Actually, this part is a bit complicated, because to explain landscape, I need to explain Dindalod first. Dindalod is a program that expresses objects such as trees, rocks, and buildings added by mods as landscapes. First of all, Dindalod resources are required to use Dindalod. Players using Mod Organizer must run the Dindalod program through Mod Organizer. Don't be too greedy for quality, choose an appropriate quality, and select only Cyrodiil and Solstheim as regions. Because, the rest of the area is actually an area you don't even go to often. Anyway, click the OK button and Dindalod will take care of the rest. When Dindalod finishes its work, landscape files are created in the specified path, and your landscape is reconstructed by installing them in the Skyrim folder. In this way, the landscape of the tree mode added as a mod was created, but when you look at it up close, you can't help but think of Minecraft. I'll give you one tip here. First, open the ENB settings screen in Skyrim and enable depth of field. And if you go to the shader parameter side, there is ENB depth of field FX. There is a focus type setting field on the focus side. Set this to the manual value of 3. Then, move further down and set a value of 0.1 in manual focus depth. This will automatically DOF the street where the landscape is and blur it. Not only does this give you a feel for the depth of field effect, but it also blurs low quality landscapes so you don't perceive the landscape quality. This is the reason why I just explained that you don't have to set the landscape quality too high. No matter how high the quality is, in the end, a landscape like Minecraft is a reality. 
I think it would be wiser to just blur this out. In addition, this method does not have to set the landscape quality to high, but it can be set to low, so there is an effect of increasing the frame rate. This is the method I often use in Oblivion, so please try setting it up like this. This concludes all the videos about upgrade your Skyrim's environment and visuals. Thank you very much for watching the video till the end. Subscriptions, likes and notification settings are very helpful for channel growth. See you next time.